what's up my lovely people there is a rising trend that is going to be huge in 2026 and that's the faux yarn design and i'm going to show you exactly what i mean so i'm gonna go ahead and go to etsy i'm gonna just type in fall designs let's do png and there should be a couple right at the top like this one right here faux yarn design 3d another one right here popular now popular now and here's another one. Looks like a lot of people are just copying others, but here's a Charlie Brown one. I would not recommend to do that one because of course it's trademark and your shop can get taken down for this if you're even trying to sell it. But if it's for a personal use, then yeah, you could create this for you, personal use. Here's another one here. Here's one from Halloween. So they either call it faux embroidery or faux yarn. Let me see if I can find any more. This one looks more like embroidery, but it's still faux in 3D. Now that you have an idea of what faux yarn or faux embroidery design is, I'm going to now show you exactly how to create your very own using Canva AI. And I'm also thinking about showing you how to do it in ChatGPT as well. Now disclaimer, before I start this video, I am using the paid version of Canva, Canva Pro, and it is $15.95, at least at this moment it is each month. So what I'm gonna do is come over here to Canva AI, and then I'm gonna go down to image. And I already have my prompts ready. I use ChatGPT to create these prompts. And like I said, these are gonna be, I saw a lot of fall ones, but I'm ahead and create some Christmas ones because Christmas is coming up as we all know so it's always best to create your designs at least three to four months ahead of time if you're selling them if it's for personal use then it doesn't matter I guess when you create the designs but if you're trying to sell these and put these on the market it's best to sell them or have them out three to four months ahead of time so that way they get enough time in the algorithm or wherever you're at to get discovered so let's go ahead and start on the first one the first one's going to be a reindeer i'm going to make sure it's on image the style i'm going to do none and for the ratio i'm going to do a one by one ratio and let's see how this comes out and with canva ai you do get four different results for this out of all of these I like this one the most and then all you have to do is just download it and open it into another canvas to remove the background and you have your very own faux yarn design let's create the next one let's create a snowman and see how this one comes out so out of all these I probably like this one the most all right let's move on to the next one Actually, let me run that snowman back again. I know it's on a white on a white background, but I just want to run it again to see what Canva gives me. Okay, this one's good. I like this one and this one too. So in all, I think I'm gonna go ahead and create at least eight. The next one is gonna be a gingerbread man. And if you're looking for these prompts, if you're interested in using these prompts for yourself, go ahead and check out the link below for my free community. They'll be located there. This one came out nice. This one and the third one see how this gives the detail of the yarn and it's giving a 3d effect as well that's exactly what we're looking for okay these came out a little weird i'm not in love with uh, the part yarn part not yarn in the design if his whole face was yarn that'll be great but it's not this one is <laughs> i don't know it's okay it could work but i'm not in love with it so i might need to tweak this prompt a little bit Let's generate again and see what comes out the second time. Okay, this one's okay. He looks like he's kind of high, but it's okay. So you may want to generate a couple times until you get exactly what you want or maybe change the prompt around. But out of all of these, I think that this one probably came out the best. Now I'm gonna try a Christmas elf. And these don't have to be just for t-shirt designs. It can be for whatever you want to create, whether it's pillows, a notebook cover, a mug. Um, I don't like that the body is cut off. I mean, I could probably fix that when I move over to a canvas page, but this one came out the best out of all of them. Now let's try a Christmas present. And you can also just take these prompts, put them in the chat GPT and just adjust them for each season that is to come. So after Christmas, you have New Year's, after New Year's, whatever holidays that are in January. Then February, you have Valentine's Day. The possibilities are really endless. So out of all of these, I like this one the most. So if you don't want just a plain red and green gift like this, you can always, like I said, change up the prompt, change the color, 
change the design on the side. Maybe you want some like little white swirls on the side, just add it to the prompt. Now I'm going to attempt a nativity scene and see how that one comes out. I'm a little nervous for this one, not gonna lie. I may need to change the ratio, but let's see what Canva creates. Oh, actually it came out pretty nicely. It's, it's giving 3D 3D, it's not like flat. 3D, but it's it's something. So like this little star right here, I'll have to probably remove that because that wouldn't really be any good to me because it's so blurred out. But everything else came out good. So like this one right here, the star is a little bit closer to them. So I could probably use this one here and this one here as well. The star is a little iffy, but I could probably still use that. I can do something with that. Okay, so I think this is gonna be my seventh one. This is gonna be a Christmas tree. I'm crossing my fingers and hope this will come out really nicely. Okay, so I like this one and this one the most. As I said before, you can always change the prompt around to change the color, maybe add some more ornaments to it. I just did a, you know, a general Christmas tree. And this one looks really good. So I think that's seven images. Let's see, one, two, three, four, I don't know if I wanna count this. Let me see, five, six, seven, eight. Let's do one more. I'm gonna do a Christmas ornament. This one's gonna be in the color pink, I believe. Nope, I was wrong. It's in red and that's fine. Okay, it's a little plain, I'm not gonna lie, but it's 3D and it's yarn. It's knitted yarn, so that is the end goal. Since that one came out so plain, I'm gonna try out a stocking and see how this one turns out. This one came out pretty basic as well, but it's still good. It's still good, but I'm I'm wanting like a white tip on the stocking. So let's try to edit the prompt a little bit. So I'm gonna paste, and let me look through it real quick. The stocking body is made of, it's classic, the stocking. Like I said, I'm not the best at prompts. I have ChatGPT's help, but we're gonna try this out and see <laughs> if it changes anything. Okay, it understood what I was saying. It understood the assignment. So here we go. This is more what I was looking for right here. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and download my eight images and move them over to a 5,000 by 5,000 pixel canvas to remove the background. A thing I did want to touch on before I start removing the backgrounds, say you already have an existing design, but you want to turn it into a 3D yarn creation, go ahead and come over to ChatGPT. Here is the image, one of my designs that I already had, and I just type in, so I have ChatGPT 5 and I put it on instant. And all I did was type in, turn this into a highly detailed flat 3D image crafted entirely from thick, big knitting yarn in a traditional pattern on a clean white background. And this is what it gave me. All I have to do is download this, move it over to Canva and remove the background. Simple as that. So if you already have existing images, no problem. Bring it over to ChatGPT and convert it over to a 3D yarn image like this. Now I'm gonna go ahead, actually I'm gonna go ahead and download this one that I created in ChatGPT as well. Go ahead and move it over to my folder here. And what I like to do is change the background. This is a 5,000 by 5,000 pixel canvas on Canva. And what I like to do is change the color of the background. This is just me, you don't have to. I just have trust issues <laughs> with removing the background. So what I like to do is change the background of the canvas right behind the image itself to make sure when I do remove the background, the background is actually removed. Or if there's pieces left behind, I can see where the pieces are and erase them. So what I'm gonna do is select the image, go to background remover, and sometimes, Majority of the time, it will remove the background, no problem, just like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and stretch it out and bring this background back to white, but I'm just gonna wait until the end, until I'm done with everything. That's one image down, I think nine more to go. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this background. Since that one did it, I think the rest should be good as well. Okay, rinse and repeat. I don't think it's gonna take that star, um, keep that star in the image because it's too far back. I don't like that star being there. So what I'm gonna do is just click background remover again and it's already on the erase tool. I'm gonna come over here to the image and just erase that star out and press done. There we have it, let's move on. Rinse and repeat, remove background. 
and it doesn't take long to remove the background so I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest. Now I have removed the background from each one of the images that I've created. And the next step I'm going to do is download them and mock them up onto the product that I want to mock them up onto. In this case, I'm going to put them on some t-shirts. And right now I'm just sizing it up on the canvas because if you just download it as it was, the image is just gonna be small. It's gonna be a whole lot of empty space around the image once you've downloaded it. I'm gonna bring him down because it's cut off. So if you have images that have a blunt cut at the bottom, what I like to do is use my frame here. I created this. I do have a video where I show you how to create your custom Canva frames. This is going to give this image a like jagged edge instead. So all I'm gonna do is Let's see if I just drag it. I want to make sure the background is still removed from this image. So let's make the background blue. Okay, cool. And you see how the edges are jagged. You can change it up. You can make them more smoother, create your own canvas. That's fine. But I just didn't want it to be a blunt cut at the bottom of the image. So now I'm going to go ahead and bring this back to a white background size this up and once you're done sizing up your images go ahead and hit share go down to download of course make sure transparent background leave it at 5,000 by 5,000 pixels and make sure you have the pages that you want to be downloaded selected and I'm going to go ahead and click done I know I didn't finish the rest of the images but I'm just going to click done and then click download. Now that I have all of my new designs with a transparent background uploaded to Canva, I'm gonna go ahead and mock them up on my t-shirt mock-ups here. So the first one, let's go ahead and, hmm, it's a red shirt. I don't want the red to blend in, the red of his hat to blend in with the shirt. So I'm gonna use a different color. Let's scroll down to this ivory here and use the reindeer. So you see me sizing this up, this is why I go ahead and size it up before I download it so I don't have to do all of that, what I just did. Go ahead and move it over. I mean, the mouth is kind of blending in with the ivory, but it's okay. I'm just gonna show you an example of how I mock up my images. Let's go ahead and use this gingerbread man on the pink. Size it up, go ahead and stretch it out a little bit, tilt it a bit because the shirt itself is tilted, the hand is holding it at an angle. I'm gonna go ahead and position it behind the thumb to the back. And let's go ahead and, uh, I say the tree, but the shirt is already green. Let's do the snowman. Yeah, there we go. Let's make it a little bit bigger. And like I said before, if you're looking for these prompts, you wanna use them yourself, that's fine. You can find them in my free community. Link will be below this video. And let's place this image behind the thumb as well. And uh, for this military green, I say this is a good fit for the Santa. Why is that? Because I did not size up the Santa. All right. Now I'm trying to look for one for the nativity scene. I think that one can go on the this one here. So all I'm gonna do, since I already have an image right there, I'm just gonna drag and drop. I hope it cut it off. Okay, there we go, there we go. Turn it to an angle. And for this stocking here, I think the military green is a best fit as well. and just rinse and repeat for the rest. I'm trying to see where I want to place this nutcracker. I'm thinking they'll probably look better since majority of them is kind of bright, but not bright. Let's try it on the ivory and see how that comes out. Okay. There we go, size it up. position it behind the thumb. Now I have mocked up all of the 3D yarn designs. Definitely let me know your thoughts. If you like more videos like this, 
or a specific holiday. I know I didn't add words to these designs. I just wanted to show you how to at least create your very own faux yarn designs. The text can come later, but just wanted to start off with the images. But the one I like the most will have to be the snowman right there. And I like the reindeer the most and the nutcracker. Comment below, let me know if this video was helpful. And once again, you can find these prompts in the free community, the creator hub, link below. Until next time, I'll talk to you guys later.